previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Well, my dear fellows, that was a close shave. Good thing you didn't take that too long in the message boxes there, Narhoda. We would have eaten shit. Oh, that was my fault, huh? Yes, your fault. You should have gone through the messages faster. You knew the answers. You didn't need all that fluff dialogue. Shut up, Mr. Holmes. And now back to leg people. Stinko B. Back with some more of the greatest attorney to resolve. When we last left off, we finally completed our investigation. Damn, that was a long section of investigation. Uh, fortunately, it was a very interesting one, though. They, they they jammed it packed full of just a ton of shit, dude. A ton of stuff. Both the uncovering of Cosmo's identity, uh, the uh, meeting of the the uh, the coroner, and also meeting of uh, the robotic uh, Mr. Drebber. Which, by the way, you guys said uh, you were a, more of a fan of the first voice. And to be perfectly frank, when I went back to edit, I felt the exact same way. I was like, nah, this isn't going to work. So I was already... I was already planning to change it, change it back. Cause I was like, ah, I wasn't a fan of it either. Um, so I'm going to switch it back to the voice I went with originally. Um, and I'll try my best to maybe make it just slightly more like robotic at times. Um, I think that'll work better, but yeah, that's that the robot one just didn't work. I, I just kept seeing the robo animations. And I was like, man, they're really going in hard with those. Like maybe he really should sound like super robotic, but, uh, the problem with the robotic voice is it's so, it can be so stilted. And if it's too, if it's done too hard, uh, it really kind of can take away from, especially if the character has a lot of charisma and animation stuff like this character clearly does. It just kind of takes away from that. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll switch it back. But yes. Okay. So now we're back to the trial. Now it's time to piece everything together. And I don't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> I don't, I, <laughs> this was really weird. Like, is it just going to end up being Drebber and that's it? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like this is setting us up for something like we came across him and like he's already clearly not a great guy right he like was seemingly gonna blow up the lab to hide evidence and do shit he had a, he was the one that had the crossbow and clearly shot the balloon which i think is part of was part of the yeah it was part of the illusion because the uh the guy was in the balloon so it's like i can't imagine it's just simply well he died because he fell to the ground but it was it wasn't even that then actually now think about it he had a a wound in his his chest right which suggests he might have been shot with the crossbow but then who would have taken the crossbow out if that were the case yeah now think about it uh, i don't know man this this one's a this is a weird one this is a fucking weird there's a lot of shit happening oh and of course at the end of the of the investigation he ended up blowing up the the device before i guess before we investigated it i didn't the uh forensic team show up there before we did like or like right after we were we were there so i feel like they should have already had a good fucking look at it unless they find some shit and they keep it to themselves um but fortunately we did seem to find the blueprints for the device and i think got to them before they were finished burning though i don't think those actually were added to my court record either <laughs> might have to wait for the trial for for uh Vansies to be like here it is i have it right here but i'm not gonna show it to the defense because fuck you ah oh, come on i thought we were friends now no no we're not friends you stop looking at me like that all right you foolish nippenies, you. Mm. It's all Sundari and shit, you know. Uh, but anyway, last episode, uh, Robin said, uh, Holmes, the idea of instantaneous kinesis is quite impossible. The scientist's hypothesis is not feasible. Also, Holmes, we have just witnessed an anti gravity device. <laughs> it may seem hard to believe, but the truth lays from all eyes. <laughs> I know, right? Dude, I, I love, I love the initial, like, reasoning that he goes with in all of his stuff. It's such a clever, like, cleverly structured system they have going on here and it's one of those systems that i, I actually like it so much that i, I feel like it, it, it's probably not going to get old for a long time because they do such a good job with it and making it both funny but also showing that holmes isn't a complete fucking buffoon because all of the the conclusions that he comes to are true right it's just his reasoning about getting there um, and then when Naruhoto comes in to, to, to fix it, right, we cover a few more things as well. But what he says at the start of every one of his uh, his deductions is always right. Um, and I, th I like that, you know, that's it's like he's too excited, though. So he, he like he gets the he gets the conclusions, but he's like he's so excited about it. He just like rushes together some horseshit for his fucking reasoning. And I don't know. I just I, I, it cracks me up, man. But Robin, thank you so much for your hilarious and truly accurate comment. And it's that reason you are comment of the day. But all right, guys, finally, we're time to hop back in this trial and figure out what the dicks is going on in this case. So let's get let's get started. 
Oh, yeah. I started thinking about it. Do those cops that were up there also get blown to bits, too? Are they fucking dead? Um, October 24th, 9 11 a.m., the old Bailey defendant's in chamber. Good morning to you, Mr. Narahoto. Ah, uh, good morning, Professor. Ready for today's proceedings? I hope so. I should be. Even I, with nothing left to. Good morning, my dear fellows. <laughs> Woo -ha! Oh, Mr. Holmes! You're here with your soundtrack. Yes, Iris, turn up that beat. Yeah, you got it, Holmes. Hey, do, do, do. Why, naturally, a true gentleman stands shoulder to shoulder with his friends in battle at all times, except those cases at the stocks that didn't count. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'll see you later then. Okay, bye. Here you go, skipping off. Now, Professor, we really need you to remain calm in the courtroom today. Yes. Do try your hardest not to enter the witness stand uninvited again and lose your fucking mind. Yes, I will. I realize it was a mistake, but I... My dear fellows, I must interject. I'm back again. Here's my music again. Huh? Oh, you're still here, Mr. Holmes. What's the matter? Surely you've overlooked some praise, have you not? To be cast in my direction. <laughs> Look, I'm here. I did the thing. Sorry. I don't follow. Must I spell it out? I, the great Sherlock Holmes, the great detective of worldwide acclamation, arose at some ungodly hour to be here now. First the thing in the morning. A miracle, you must agree. Well, if I must agree, then. As you know, my sleep is quite impregnable. Iris had to employ her full gamut of tactics. She pulled the covers off, shook me, poked both cheeks, and punched me and kicked me from the bed. <laughs> Beat the ever-living shit out of me. Then she poured a boiling cup of her latest experimental blend on my face, and at last I was bestirred. Oh, my. Iris has been busy. Iris doesn't have it in her, her to go that far. She's too nice. Ah, I still suspect of a fellow scientist, one who really even the possibilities of blending tea. I'm the one worthy of praise here, not Iris. This is my victor. <laughs> He's so petty. Uh... Sorry to cut in. Sorry to cut in. Oh, Inspector Gregson. Good morning. Gregson, my dear fellow, why the grim expression at this delightfully early hour? Praise me. Love me. Oh, I don't know. Maybe because I'm being confronted with a grim expression, eh? Dear me. Are you going to take that insult lying down, Professor? <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Poor Professor. Anyway, here's the paperwork you asked for. What paperwork? Ah, I took the liberty of requesting it yesterday. I have a feeling it may prove useful. You won't believe the hoops I had to jump through to get this brought out of the archives. It's the Professor's autopsy report. That, that mass murderers? Who killed five members of the aristocracy? He was found guilty in a closed trial ten years ago now. It was all done under wraps. He was quickly executed soon after the trial. It's all in here. So, okay. We're getting this autopsy report. That's really leading me to believe that he's going to be a big part of this case after all. Not just like the bigger picture of this uh, this game. The killer's autopsy report. Uh, the autopsy report of the mass murder notice professor who was tried and found guilty by a closed trial 10 years ago. I, I don't know what to say. Thank you, Inspector. I don't know how, what the hell this is going to do, but... Uh, have I even looked at this yet? Uh, oh wait. This lock does look very strong, doesn't it? There's definitely no way you could remove the mask yourself if it was put on you. What a terrible way to treat someone. Even a conv convicted criminal. I know. It's starting to make me live it, actually. Sarahoto, please. I mean, just think about it. Imagine if you had an itch on your cheek all of a sudden. You'd be utterly helpless. And also, breathing could be a problem. Well, yes, that's true. But I'm not sure that warrants quite so much anger. Oh, right. Sorry. And you know it definitely does! How dare they? Who is the real monster here? Uh, okay, let's have a look at this. Condemned, uh, prisoner. Blank redacted for confidentiality. Soon in the professor. Death by hanging confirmed at midnight June 17th. What? That's it? That's all it says? Courtney Stevens. Who the fuck is that? Wait, it's not... Oh. Hmm. 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 That's interesting. Same first name. 
Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not gonna come across another person in this game that has the same name as another guy <laughs> or as another person, all right? Not the same first name. They just don't do that. It's impossible. It's impossible for anyone to have the same first name as somebody else in these games, which means this is absolutely the same person. And that's that was her, maybe her married name. And now Scythe is her maiden name, mayhaps. Could it possibly be that Stevens was that was the was the murderer actually like her her husband? Oh, ooh. What if it was the case of the murderer was her husband? and that daughter of theirs is their child. Might explain why the daughter has slightly uh, homicidal tendencies, right? It's like, I just wanna see what's inside this person, right? Hmm, maybe. So that they, she had her name there, Courtney Stevens, because she was still technically married and she was the, she was the one doing the autopsy. Yes, that's totally it, right? It's still her. And then, but now that he's dead, she gets her maiden name again, or she's remarried, one or the other. I mean, it could be coincidental, but it's like, <laughs> that'd be a pretty big I was that'd be a pretty hilariously big indicator of uh what who this guy's identity is I don't know it'd also be a little weird that they would let literally his uh his wife conduct the uh the autopsy right that does seem a little unusual yeah this seems more like she could have got could have let him get away right or she I don't know did something to make sure that he didn't actually die that, that does seem a little like a bit more if that really is the case right that seems like a massive oversight <laughs> well uh we're gonna go ahead and uh have him hanged and we're gonna leave everything all the responsibility to his wife potentially I, again this is just an assumption it could be they're not at all married or related but i just find it interesting that she her last name would be different here right you know what they say in these Ace turning games there are no coincidences um i think i've examined everything else though right we got a lot of evidence in this case Yes, much obliged, Gregson. Well, slowly, Lord of the Yard, let's do all we can. In the shadow of the great detective Holmes, of course. Not better, you're better. Well then, Professor Harebrain, this is it. See, we're gonna lay all this to rest at last. I wish you the best of luck, Professor. I'm so screwed, aren't I? I suppose he'll be in there today, will he? Trevor. Yes, we expect the prosecution to summon him as a witness. I'm still amazed that you managed to find him in just one day. I really owe you both so much. Uh, Counselor the defendant, get in here. Draw's about to resume. Gotta make your way to the courtroom at once. I have to yell that every time. You know, you're just like right there across the hall. Pretty close to me, but I still gotta yell at the top of my lungs. Thank you, British Commander. Yeah, I don't mention it. It's why I'm here for. This is it then, the final chapter of case three. My, funny, my heart's racing a little. I have not felt this before, actually. This strange foreboding. As if something's gonna happen in this trial that I'm not ready for. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the uh, fucking anticipation. But I can't let that distract me from the only thing that really matters here. We're all about to fucking die. I mean, finding the truth. Oh boy. Um, October 24th, 9.30 a.m., the old Bailey courtroom. <laughs> this guy's the magician guy over there still pulling, just pulling cards out infinitely. It's a giant pile on the floor by his feet. Oh, order of the court, in the name of our majesty, the queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again. We resume the public hearing of Albert Harebrain here, who present, who stands accused of murder. God, feels like it's been like three years since we came back here. You guys sure took your sweet time investigating that scene. Sorry, it was a, it was a hefty one. Are the counsels for the prosecution defense ready to proceed? <gasps> All right. That's right. I forgot you were going to be up there too. The prosecution is ready, my lord. And so is my little Maya friend. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look. Look, little Nipponese friend. I've got my own Suzuto. Jealous. No, I've got the original Susan. Shut up! My sister's better! The defense is ready, my lord. Why am I not visible? Why do I have to be on your right, not your left, so other people can see me? Sorry. I just can't have you making funny faces every time I slam my hand. And it makes squeaky sounds sometimes. And then you laugh at me. As promised, Lord Vensix is his apprentice with him. His apprentice with memory loss. Here I am. If I may, Lord Van Seeks, who the doodle pants is that? Yes, my lord. 
there appears to be someone standing at your side. <laughs> Who the- <laughs> This is my son! Ah, yes. My apprentice and assistant. The prosecution believes today's proceedings will see the complexity of this case rise considerably. <gasps> oh! He's helping! I therefore instructed my assistant to attend to ensure the smooth and running of the trial. <laughs> That's so sick! <laughs> That's so dope. Wow. Wait, you're telling me you cut the cork off that bottle? Wouldn't there still be half a cork stuck at the bottom there? <laughs> he fucking sheathed the sword. And the smooth running of liquid refreshments by the look of it. Oh my God. They're, they're going to be tag teaming animations here, aren't they? Is he going to be like, ch is he chucking, when he chucks the glass over, is the guy like definitely dodge out of the way? Or like slice it into pieces or something? The way he holds himself. The way he moves. I recognize that that sword style anywhere. He ten Mitsuzuki style. Cause he used it. It couldn't be anyone else. But he's still suffering from amnesia. Damn you, plot devices. So there's really nothing we can do at the moment. Other than give him a hug. I know, but oh, this is so very hard. It would appear the prosecution has done a fine job responding to the demands of the court made yesterday. I understand you have successfully secured the engineer to disappear from the seat on the day in question. Hey, that was us. We did that. Me. Yes, my lord. It was a lot of hard work. We put in many, many hours to get him. You ass. I intend to call him as a witness shortly. Very good. Very good. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, who have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this courtroom today and are actually different people, are you ready and willing to proceed? Of course, my lord. I'm sure we all understand the importance of doing our civic duty. I do so despise deception and deceit. I find it so very wearing. To take a man's life with a conju conjuring trick. It's against the magician's code, not to mention the law. Any fake scientist should feel the wrath of God, if you ask me. Um, we have to listen to what he said on both sides of it. And, um, this is the one. That's it, isn't it? Where's the lights in my day? Where's it like this at all? <laughs> Thank you all for accu accurately representing your one note personalities. If all parties are ready to proceed, you may begin, Lord Van Zeeks. For I do, my lord, there is a report I must read to the court. Ooh, look how cool that is. Ha! I don't have to pull out of my pants anymore like I usually do. Yesterday, yesterday at the Great Exhibition Grounds, the evidence of primary importance in this case. The super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine, which was installed on the experimentation stage, was deliberately destroyed in an explosion, affected by an unknown person or persons. What do you mean unknown? We know exactly who it was. He literally was like, I'm gonna go blow that up now. It was? What? Yeah, an explosion! This is an outbreak! Whoopsie doodle. Yes, I heard this grave news yesterday. Scotland Yard submitted a report to my office in the evening. I read that the machine was blasted to smithers and the wreckage reduced to ashes in the flames. I have here a photographic print of the scene taken in the wake of the explosion. Ow! Okay, so there is a giant hole in the bottom of this thing. There's a massive fucking hole in the bottom of this thing. It shows what little remains of the machine. Mm, yes, a terrible business. He did destroy the evidence, did he? That Enoch Trevor. The court will take his British evidence council. Really? We're not like... Should we just be arguing like it was Enoch Trevor? He literally told us. Gregson was there. I think Courtney Scythe was there. We all heard him say it. He did it. He fucking did it. What the fuck? Uh, Post-exposure photograph. Photograph printed the experimentation stage after it was completely leveled by a time bomb. The metal floor of the stage has been blown up open by the explosion. So... Yeah. Is there anything else that stands out here? I think it's mainly the giant hole in the bottom of this. Big enough for someone to fall through. Late yesterday afternoon, the protection afforded to the machine by the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act was revoked. However, before a thorough investigation could begin, the invention was obliterated from existence. Wow, really? You guys still didn't get there and look at this shit? God damn. As such, 
this will become a very different trial. Shut up! As it stands now, with no evidence on which to draw meaningful conclusions, the authenticity of the Kinesis machine will remain forever in obscurity. Hmm, indeed. A most unfortunate state of affairs. However, one thing remains clear. The victim's death was a result of the actions of the accused. Of that, we can be certain. For it was the accused himself who was operating the machine, and who had ultimately caused this loss of control. Objection! Objection! As Lord Van Zix rightly says, it's a very different trial now. The accused accepts responsibility for his part in the events that transpired. He nods that Mr. Asman died as a result of the accident caused by his machine's malfunction. However, unbeknownst to the professor, he was being deliberately deceived by a pair of very clever fraudsters. Names, counsel, if you please. The engineer, Mr. Enoch Drebber, and the victim himself, Mr. Odie Asman. So what exactly were those two men up to behind the defendant's back? The defense intends to expose that information, thus establishing the unequivocal innocence of the defendant. Thank you, counsels. The positions of the prosecution defense have been clearly stated. Lord Van Zeet, summon your first witness, please. At once, my lord. Prosecution calls the engineer, Mr. Enoch Trevor, to the stand. Oh, we're calling him right at the start. Okay, I thought uh, Greg's going to be up here first. Or Psy, there's somebody. State your name and occupation for the court. Name Enoch Drebber. Occupation? Hard to pin down, I would say. See that black mark on? Yes, why do I feel so? I've seen it somewhere before. Oh, you too. I have the exact same feeling. Hey, mm, how's it going? We want to buy it by corn cob, you do? Your file indicates that you are currently being investigated in connection with another case. The theft of a waxwork model, is it? A most extraordinary sounding business. Like what? But that has no bearing on this trial, I assure you. Cleave it from your mind. You're familiar with the public experiment carried out at the Great Exhibition some days ago. The accused super high voltage inst instantaneous kinesis demonstration. Yes, you could say that. I am aware of it. There was a terrible accident, wasn't there? It was you, Mr. Drebber, who constructed the vast machine used in the experiment. Or so our investigation indicates. Can you confirm your involvement? Yes, I constructed it in precise accordance with the blueprints, but that's all. Then the court will be very interested to hear your thoughts about the machine, I'm sure. An amazing device, if you ask me. The pinnacle of modern science, making instantaneous kinesis a reality at last. What? Good, good gracious, do you mean to say that the experiment was bona fide? Is that your belief, sir? Yes, that is very much my belief. Such a waste that it blew up. Objection. We've already, but we've already established the machine was nothing more than a prop for an elaborate conjuring trick. Objection! Objection! You've established nothing of the sort. All that was shown during yesterday's proceedings is that the same outcome could have been produced by a means of stage trickery. The defense merely proposed a method and demonstrated its feasibility. Nothing more. But, but... We procrastinated long enough, I feel. Witness, you will now give your formal testimony. How about the machine that you constructed for the purpose of the demonstration at the Great Exhibition? Understood. Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. The Kinesis Machine. I met the young professor approximately one year ago through Mr. Asman's introduction. He provided me with the blueprints and I constructed the machine to his precise specifications. It was no trick. Hmm. If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a body double. Tell me, did the victim have a twin? 
All the spectators saw the birdcage appear above their heads and then crash headfirst into the crystal tower. A terrible accident, I grant you. Perhaps the science on which the machine was built was flawed somehow. The, the body double? That goes without saying, surely. To give the impression that something has moved, when in reality it hasn't. It's a basic conjuring principle. The deception cannot be as chi without substituting the original with a fake at some point in the performance. But would I be right in saying you haven't managed to establish anything along those lines? Yeah. Incidentally, the prosecution has already confirmed that Mr. Asman had no twin siblings. Mm, it's my understanding this witness is well versed in conjuring awfulness. But such talents do not indicate that he was actually able to accomplish what he claims. Namely, the construction of what, by all accounts, must have been an extremely complex scientific machine. Whatever do you... I mean, I've noticed he's got a lot of orange text. It's almost making me wonder, she... maybe I should be like going kind of robo whenever he gets to orange text as opposed to... He's, he does. Yeah, he's like, he's, it's not just the regular orange text of this is sort of significant. It's like, like mean, right? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's saying it. Uh, yeah, it seems to be like a strange... I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck around a little bit with it. Whatever do you mean? Yesterday's proceedings brought the true nature of your past exploits into light, Mr. Drebber. Indeed it did, my lord. As a swindler who prays on innocent scientists to elicit government grant money through conjuring know-how. Yes, it's true that I possess considerable knowledge of stage magic. But crucially, my scientific knowledge has more than matches that of any academic in the field. Investigation in the witness's workshop attests to that claim, my lord. As evidence, the police found this Royal Society trophy for young talent in science there. Yes, that's true. We spotted there ourselves. If our hypothesis is sound, it can always be forged into a physical manifestation with sufficient skill. Though I may have sold the secrets of some deceptive wiles to sniveling, talentless scientists in the past. B would you therefore assert the explosion of the machine was... An unfortunate accident. Oh, of course. A deliberate act of murder carried out by misuse of the science. Counsel to the defense, your cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. Okay. The Kinesis Machine. I met the young professor approximately one year ago through Mr. Asman's introduction. Hold it! Mata! So you were already acquainted with Mr. Asman himself? Not really. By chance. I'd seen his name mentioned in the papers. That's all. But I had no interest in his private affairs. If he was an unscrupulous investor, it was no concern of mine. As long as people pay their bills, I take up my tools and construct what they ask for. So why did Mr. Asman approach you in particular then? Who can say? I presume my name is associated with excellence in engineering. Not to mention excellence in fraud. Hard to gauge, but the point is all I did was construct the machine according to the blueprints I was given. In other words, the Kinesis machine was built on solid scientific principles. Yes. You might say that. Professor Hairbrain certainly has a mind like no other. You find with the blueprints, I constructed the machine to its precise specifications. It was no trick. Hold it! I don't believe you! It's clear that you have been both scientific knowledge and knowledge of conjuring magic, however. The more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to handle whatever comes along. But your implication is that I furnish the machine with some trickery, I think. It's a possibility that we have to explore. Unfortunately, though, the machine has been blown up kingdom come. So there's really nothing left to explore, is there? It appears that the Kinesis machine was fitted with a timed explosive device of some kind. And there's nothing left of that device either. Not a single shred of evidence remaining, I hear. 
He must have planned all this from the outset. But in any case, it's abundantly clear that the experiment couldn't have been a trick. If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a body double. Tell me, did the victim have a twin? Hold it! Of course, that's it. Mr. Asman was a twin. Yeah! Objection! Objection! Shut your dumb face! Perhaps my learned friend wasn't listening earlier. Mr. Asman had no twin siblings. Yeah, <laughs> I like to lean back a bit. No, I heard you before. But the threat of hope hadn't quite left me. The demonstration could have been a trick. There was somebody who looked sufficiently like the victim. But Dr. Scythe absolutely ruled that out as a possibility. Hmm. Interesting, though, but is Dr. Scythe pot potentially got an investment in this case and is actually lying about it, right? It's beyond question that the victim himself, Mr. Asman, did move from the stage to the Crystal Tower. The figures found at the scene attest to the fact. Which means that potentially then, maybe, maybe in fact, Mr. Asman did, and that could it be that Mr. Asman had a brother, that brother was the, the professor, and it was and that professor is also the husband or was the husband of Courtney Scythe. Hmm? Maybe? Crazy? I don't know. Let's find out. So it can't have been orchestrated using someone who looked identical to Mr. Asman then. What are you thinking, Mr. Narahoto? I'm just thinking how fucked I am. No, no, nothing. Just the idea of someone who looked identical to the victim is playing on my mind. Um, all the spectators saw the birdcage appear above their heads and crash headfirst into the crystal tower. Hold it! Just gonna keep pressing for right now. It crashed headfirst, you say? According to the many witness reports from those there at the time, yes. Were you not there at the exhibition grounds on the day? Hmm, unlikely. I rarely leave my workshop. Yet another of your unique inventions was found at the scene. Well, it was the unveiling of a machine I'd labored over for many months. I saw it clearly with my own eyes. The birdcage plummeting headfirst into the tower. What a surprise. I believe the victim's neck was broken from the headlong fall, wasn't it? How would you have come by that information? Even in Infernal, recluse like me reads the newspapers, you know. According to the reports, two injuries were apparent on the victim's body. Yes, he'd been stabbed in the chest by a screwdriver, believed to be belong to the defendant. And he had broken vertebrae as a result of a fall from a considerable height. Correct. My learned friend has been doing his research, it seems, or at least was paying attention yesterday. Do we know which injury was the fatal one? Sadly not. Forensic science is not yet at a level where such things can be determined. Mm. What we do know is that the victim died having sustained both injuries at some point in the experiment, and since he was found in the birdcage with his neck broken. It's obvious that he fell from a considerable height. Hmm, I suppose that's hard to deny. A terrible accident, I grant you. Perhaps the scientists, the science on which this machine was built was flawed somehow. Hold it! So you understood the science, did you? Not in the slightest. Right. As I said a number of times, I'm an engineer. My job is to manufacture according to the blueprints I'm given. I would be inviting manifold problems if I foolishly allowed my brain to digest the ideas behind them. I could be accused of stealing those ideas, for example. But how is it possible to construct a machine without really understanding the principles it relies on? Well, you're practicing law without really understanding the principles it relies on, aren't you? A very good point, asshole. Stand it up for yourself, Mr. Naruto. The point is, the experiment resulted in instantaneous kinesis taking place. As such, the science must be sound. Yes, and really, experimental results are all that matters when it comes to proving a hypothesis. He's certainly very sure of himself. 
What do you think, Mr. Rahoto? Well, now that the machine has been completely destroyed by yesterday's explosion, it's going to be impossible to argue its authenticity in one way or the other. But if we're unable to establish that it was a piece of stage trickery rather than genuine science, we have no grounds to which to, on which to demonstrate Professor Harebrain's innocence. Both Mr. Aspen and this man in the stand tricked the professor and used him. They took advantage of his naivete and his unbending belief in his work, and I won't let them get away with it. And seeing as the professor is an old friend of Lord Van Zeek's, what on earth must he be feeling towards Drebber? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so clearly I think the, uh, is this one, right? Tell me, did he have a twin? So what are we working with here? We're trying to suggest that this shit, maybe? Yeah, there's nothing here that actually indicates the, uh, what it was that actually stabbed him, right? It's like, oh, it could have been a crossbow or could have been a screwdriver. Actually, well, this actually, screwdrivers literally got his blood on there, but maybe he was already stabbed. <laughs> Thing is, that could have also been done post-mortem, right? Hmm, this is a hard one to try to piece together exactly what it wants me to do here. Did the victim have a twin? The problem is that, wh what do I have here that it indicates that he would have had a twin? And maybe it's another part here. They saw the birdcage appear above their heads and crash head first in the crystal tower. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This, oh no, it's this. This is, Objection. yes, okay. I was, I'm, I'm, I was trying, I'm like, this isn't working, there's nothing here. I gotta, that's what the problem is. If you're like focusing on one thing, that, like it made it really seem like that that had to be the statement I pressed on, right? It was like, oh, think about that twin thing really rests the wrong way. Oh, well, I gotta look for something for that. But no, it's not the case. It, it, like I'm looking there, I find nothing for it. It's nice, you gotta turn your thing in her. You just gotta look at some of the other bits of testimony and, and then just remember what other evidence you have that could possibly answer stuff, so. We examined the bird case that crashed in the crystal tower ourselves. As you can see, the cage, which I have in my pocket right here, which is a wooden construction has sustained damage in one particular spot. Following the explosion, it fell some 30 feet into the glass of the crystal tower. That level of damage is to be expected, surely. I agree. The damage itself is entirely understandable. But what doesn't make sense is the location of that damage. Oh, that woke you up, didn't it? All the breakages in the wood are at the base of the birdcage, not the top. What are you saying? That's the opposite of where they should be. That's right, my lord. The birdcage that was at the scene is damaged at its base. So we have reports of the birdcage falling headlong into the crystal tower, yet the damage is at the bottom. The only way to recon reconcile these two facts is to accept that there were two bird cages in play that day, which were at some point switched. Switched during what was, wasn't a scientific experiment at all, but an elaborate piece of stage trickery. Good gracious, explain yourself, witness. I, well. If we examine the facts, there's only one logical conclusion we can draw. The damage on the base of the birdcage clearly indicates that it crashed tail first into the tower. But the multiple witness reports claim it fell head first. The birdcage materialized in the sky next to a balloon flying over the stage, following a spontaneous explosion at an altitude of some 60 feet above ground level, which is approximately 18 meters. It then proceeded to fall some 30 feet into the crystal tower in the ensuing deflagration. Witness reports amid such chaos are notoriously unreliable. But the victim's neck was broken. Objection. Objection! He plummeted 30 feet inside a heavy wooden cage. However he fell, it would be unsurprising to find one or two of his vertebrae crushed. A riveting scientific analysis of events from the prosecution there. Though to be even more rigorous, you would have to say it was only one vertebrae, actually. He wasn't quiet for long. I find it hard to see what's motivating Lord Van Zeeks. This one is clearly a swindler and one who deceived a personal friend of his. If you're going to establish this deception, do it right. Sorry? I feel like that's the undertone here. Oh, that's so cool, man. Oh, I love it, dude. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm so fucking glad he fucking said that. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I like this is what I'm, I'm loving about these games. And it's such a small thing, but it goes such a long way. Sometimes it feels like characters are just intentionally fucking stupid, right? Like they just cannot piece piece together the plot themselves, right? Like they have to be stupid so that, oh, we get the big revelation to them in the end. But it's not really a real revelation to us because we already kind of get it. But they're not doing that here, right? Like they, they figure out super fucking early. That's fucking my best friend Kazuma, right? And this is since he could just be like, and our heart's like, oh, it's just, it's just Van Six. He's just being a dickhead. Even though up to this point, we've had a ton of evidence to show that uh, Van Six maybe isn't as bad as he appears to be, right? We're already starting to get that indic indication to Naruhodo, so he should be able to piece it together. And he fucking does. He goes, no, you know what? I know what he's thinking here. He's thinking that that's not strong enough. You got to come harder. You got to get me something better than that. And I fucking love it, dude. I love it. I don't know, man. Sometimes it just feels like sometimes like with with Phoenix and even Apollo sometimes, sometimes they just like feel like they're blissfully ignorant of like, Wait, so if the prosecutors are trying to help me here? I mean, clearly later on, right? When he and Edgeworth have really truly formed a, a solid bond of camaraderie, then then they're like, you know, they get it. But I don't know. There, I, I, I still think I remember some of those earlier cases where he was just like, I don't get it. Ah, uh, yes. There's one more point. The defense appears to have forgotten. It's obviously wasn't a trick, as a certain truth very plainly demonstrates. What? It seems to me the cross-examination had better continue until we resolve this matter. Mr. Trevor, you will amend your testimony with details of this truth. Of course, we must treat the matter scientifically after all. Ah, I nearly had him there. Whoa. whoa. Oh shit, he's swiveling. He's swiveling. His animations are pretty fucking great, I gotta say. The kinesis clearly took place because there was nowhere else 30 feet high for the birdcage to have fallen from. Uh, can we already establish though that that was the balloon? I mean, so like, uh, this one? No! Surely this is gotta be the thing you want? No, it isn't. Shut up. Really? I guess that was just a, I guess that's not really a, it's not, it's just like that was our theory, right? We saw an arrow and we saw that, but we don't actually have any clarification that it's actually in there. Objection. Oh, no, the picture. There we go. It's a diagram of the experimentation stage and its surroundings. Boom. We know that somehow the birdcage appeared in the midair before falling down to the crystal tower. Clunk. A fall of about 30 feet, or 9 meters. However, if you examine the diagram carefully, you'll see that there is one other possible location for which the birdcage could have fallen. The same distance of 30 feet. No. Well, it appears the defense's possible explanation to be forward. Is it, are we saying it came from the top of this thing? Like, up here? from the roof instead? Go ahead, Council. Yes, my lord, of course. You will indicate the place to which you are referring on the same diagram. The alternative location for which the birdcage could have possibly fallen the requisite 30 feet. Uh, I guess. Take that! If it had fallen from here, birdcage would have plummeted the same 30 foot Objection. distance. Objection, I think you're full of shit. That's the learned friend's claim. I just demonstrate to the core personally. Huh? That's a supporting gift council. Shit. Uh, what am I messing here? I can't actually move upward. I kind of figure it would be... I actually don't know what it wants from me here. Like, I legit do not understand. If it's not off the edge of this building, and it's not, like, from one of these balloons or something, I don't think it's from the fucking machine over here. The problem is I can't actually, like, move upward. I, I would have thought, oh, he just fell off the roof or something. I legit feel like I've, I've clicked everywhere on this map and I don't, <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I'm literally like, I've, I've been safe scumming. I, 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 cause I legit do not know where it wants me to click. I'm super confused here. I'm like, well, it is it the actual tower itself. Is it up here? Is it over here? Is it over here? Is it this thing? No. Where am I clicking here? It's not this balloon. It's not. No, it's like, fuck dude. I, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> what do you want from me? I legit don't understand. I'm going to click him. Seriously, I'm, I'm very confused. I don't like safe scumming. I really don't. But this one's really got me baffled here. 
It's like, it's like, must be one Take that. fucking spot here. Am I like drunk or something? Can I like fucking adjust this thing or not? God, I hope I'm not the only one who was confused by this. I really hope. I've like literally clicked all the objects that are on here. Take that. I don't. <laughs> I must be clipping, click, clicking empty space then, right? I feel like I must be clicking literally everywhere except. Take that. Oh. What? Place referring to is here. So I had to pick, okay, I had to pick specifically the point where this is me suggesting that the, oh, oh, I'm so stupid. I, uh, I, okay, I get it. I get it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was so confused what was like trying to go, what was going on here. I, I get it. I get it. This is where the hole comes into play. This fell down the hole and broke because it fell straight down. The other cage seemingly fell from out of the balloon, I, I, I think, yeah. So we're, it's just, it's so, conf it confused me because uh, I thought we were suggesting the other cage that was falling from the balloon, I guess, yeah. What we're trying to say is that there were two cages. We're not talking about the cage that fell that way, I, I guess, I guess. But then if that is the case, then how is the cage? I don't think that's the same cage, right? I think that's the point. It's like we, there, the cage was like brought back up here, right? And we we're like, oh, there's the cage lying there. And we assumed it was the one that fell from the balloon, but it actually wasn't. So where did that cage go? Where is it? <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, the place I referred to is here. Gotta feel like an idiot. But that's where the bird cage would have been, would have been to begin with. What's exactly the point, my lord? Yes, the birdcage was in the machine on the stage. But what we must also consider is the height of the stage itself. Go on, Council. Turns out the experimentation stage was built at a considerable height above ground level. If you look at the diagram, in fact, you'll see that it's about the same height above the ground as the balloon was above the crash site. Poof. When the experiment got underway, the machine and the birdcage were engulfed in steam. At that moment, the floor of the stage gave way. If we assume there to be a void underneath. Hmm. So I thought they had some cushions or something down there. The birdcage in the one seen by the audience would have fallen almost exactly the same distance. Nani? Smack. Once again, my lord, this all points to the fact that there was not one birdcage, but two. Objection. Objection. Yes, then where's the other one? My learned friend has no evidence that the stage has such a contrivance in its design. Someone is responsible for the criminal des destruction of the Kinesis machine itself. It's true. However, the stage still stands. And take a moment to look at the photographic print of the scene following yesterday's explosion. Good lord, the metal grill that formed the floor of the machine is undone. Yes, most likely blown open by the force of the explosion that destroyed the rest of the machine. The defense calls for the space below the stage to be investigated immediately. Mr. Trevor, it was you who built the Kinesis machine, which means that it was you who built the two bird cages that were used to carry out this deception. Uh. Uh, whether Professor Harebrain's hypothesis is sound or not makes no difference. Because it's the construction of this machine that matters. The machine designed to take Mr. Asman's life. And lay the blame firmly at the professor's door. So they can only have, ha have been carried out. By you, Mr. Enoch Dreber. Oh, shit. Uh. Oh, God. Ow. Objection. Malfunction. Objection. Woo! Yeah, look at that. Pour me a nice glass. Thank you for the assist there. Assistant. Ah, I see what I did there. Play on words. My learned friend has reached the end of his wild assertions. Ow! The prosecution would like to crush the defense's arguments slowly, but surely. What? Your argument fails to hold water. On two counts. Two? Firstly, before and after the experiment, this witness went nowhere near the Kinesis machine. Every relevant member of staff from the exhibition has attested to that. 
and I believe members of the Scotland Yard have also been on watch duty at every public experiment. In other words, Mr. Trevor had no opportunity to switch the alleged pair of bird cages. Hmm. So maybe someone on the inside, on the it, literally on the uh, uh, the forensic team, i.e., Courtney Scythe, could have p potentially switched them out. Maybe. But I've already explained why he wouldn't have needed to. The knowledge is with the crossbow. That doesn't bolster your case at all. The man who disappeared from the stage and the man who crashed into the tower are one in the same. Mm. The forensic investigation team's report is unequivocal on that point. Yeah. And the second flaw in your assertion is a distinct lack of motive. Why would this man have wanted to take the victim's life? He had no reason to do so. Well, he would have gotten the grant money, right? All to himself. Uh, motive? Do I have to think of everything myself? I have here a contract provided by the witness. What contract is this, Lord Van Zeeks? The contract into which Mr. Drebber's and Mr. Drebber entered with the victim, Mr. Asman. It reads, Mr. Drebber's received 30% of all remunerations of government grants or other income. 30%? Certainly very favorable contractual conditions. But there was one very important provision bolted on to that clause. What provision? Mr. Drebber may only uphold this right on condition that both contracting parties are alive. <laughs> wow, that's, a, that's kind of a weird stipulation, but... Oh. In other words, if either of us were to die, the contract would become... Null and void. So you see, I had nothing to gain from Mr. Asman's death. The diametric opposite, in fact. Yeah. <sighs> but they both better not die during this. Why is that in the contract again? Need I say more? The witness had neither an opportunity nor reason to commit the alleged crime. In short, the possibility of Mr. Trevor having done as you suggest is nil. Uh. Uh. That is pretty, uh, hmm. That said, while that is kind of a weird thing to put in your contract, it's also, that is kind of damning. I'm not actually sure then. Ah, uh. ah. Uh. Seems the defense's assertion was somewhat wide of the mark. Lord Van Zeeks, you will submit the contract's evidence, please. Okay, I need to read this shit. Detailing the terms between uh, Mr. Asman and Mr. Drepper, which they would profit from the case machine. Ah, shnikes. It's true. Ter the, the investor, Mr. Odie Asman, hereby enters into contract with the provider, Mr. Yacht Drepper, to, to fund labor and materials for construction of a super high voltage instantaneous case machine. Mr. Drepper is to receive 30% of all remunerations remunerations from government grants or other income. Mr. Drebber may only uphold this right on condition that both contracting parties are alive. Uh, Asman and Enoch Drebber. Uh, wait. Did we have a car? Oh, I don't have the card anymore. I was like, I thought there was a signature on something like before, like on, on his actual like business card, but I actually don't have it anymore. I gave that to, to Gina. Hmm. So I was thinking, well, maybe it wasn't his signature or something. I don't know. If Trevor had no opportunity to switch the birdcage on the stage with this one in the Crystal Tower, he couldn't have done it. In any case, I have no idea what his motive might have been. There is one aspect of your argument. It still holds true, however. There were two birdcages. The prosecution is unable to deny that. Ah. So I'm sure you're on the right lines, Mr. Arahoto. The question is then, yeah, what happened to that other birdcage? Why did we only find the one that fell down the hole? And also, if that is the case, right, there were two bird cages. That means there must have been two people. Um, what happened to that other person? And I'm no doubt there are other aspects of your assertion that are undeniable truths, too. Well, it would seem that the defense is no rejoinder to offer. Well, I must say I'm a little surprised. I came here to testify about the machine I built, and instead my reputation is defiled. But the prosecution's counter has set the record straight, I think. It's impossible that I'm the culprit. Objection! Objection! <gasps> who could have possibly said that? I wonder who, was it you? Was it you? No, you? Oh, it was me all along. Oh, God. At the beginning of this trial, we believed that there was only one birdcage. Yet now we know there must have been two. 
In other words, there was more to the demonstration than we realized at first. Those old cogs in his robo hand. I think it's abundantly clear. The same applies to the culprit. Get to the point. The stage demonstration was constructed and set up in its entirety by you, Mr. Drebber. Therefore, it's inconceivable that you had no hand in the events that transpired. So if circumstances mean it's impossible that you could have carried out the crime yourself, it points to the fact that someone else was involved. Someone else? Counsel, are, are you suggesting? Yeah! Yes, my lord. Mr. Trevor had an accomplice. Objection! Objection. No, I can slam my hand too. An accomplice now. Well then, I presume, you're prepared for what's to come. Now that you're accusing not only this witness, but someone else of the most serious of crimes. If these accusations turn out to be false, then make no mistake. The prosecution will demand an equally serious punishment for your slander. Well, counsel, do you intend to pursue this course and formally accuse another party of involvement in this matter? What do I do here? The, at the moment, it's a little more than a hunch on my part. I don't know for sure if Drebber had an accomplice or if he even really is the culprit here. One way or another, though, I have to make my position clear as a lawyer. So what's my stance going to be? Did Drebber have, a, have an accomplice or not? Back down, no, name the accomplice, because well, why would I back down? I threw this shit out there. The defense is ready to name Mr. Drebber's accomplice. Somehow the two bird cages must have been switched. Everything points to that. Yet according to the coroner's report, that's not a possibility. Hmm. But that inconsistency itself is a clue. Yep. Counsel. <gasps> uh, my lord. You have received a stark warning already. You are nevertheless determined that I must now ask you to identify this alleged accomplice by name. So, your answer please. Who do you claim to have been Mr. Trevor's accomplice? Interesting. It, I, it, I've actually something I've noticed about this, uh, these games, the Ace Attorney games, that they don't do compared to the Ace Attorney games, uh, is they don't have like, I will zap all of your HP bar or all of your badges or whatever, right? Like, I, for here, I was thinking, oh, this might be a, a moment where they take more than just one of my little, my little dings there. Uh, but nope, I'm fine either way, honestly. I, I don't, I'm not like, I don't prefer one way or the other. I, I do think the idea that, you know, this would take more because it is a bigger deal does kind of make sense to some aspect, but I can also understand on a gameplay aspect why that might be annoying. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's going to be you. The name of the person in question is... What's wrong, my Nipponese friend? Surely fear doesn't bind your tongue now. It's a late for that. Of course I'm afraid. After all, naming her in this capacity is definitely going to make waves. A lot of waves. Okay, good first thing I was like, shit, was I wrong? <laughs> Am I about to get dinged? I could very well turn every single person in this courtroom against me. I'm sure it'll be all right, Miss Narahoto. Thank you, Miss Susto. The enemy always appears larger than life, but you'll appear exactly the same to the enemy. All right, then. Here it goes. Interesting. Interesting. I will just throw out there how at the very beginning of this case, the moment I got the autopsy report and saw literally Courtney Side's name in there, I was like, that's weird. <laughs> we don't normally see that very often. Uh, and I was right. It was significant. You've kept us waiting long enough. Your answer, counsel, now. Hmm. The person who colluded with Mr. Drepper in order to carry out this wicked crime is Scotland Yard's coroner. Dr. Courtney Scythe! What the blaze are you talking about, Dr. Scythe? The head of the forensic investigation team and the coroner who conducted the autopsy on the victim. Oh boy. We know there were two bird cages, so who could have carried out the switch to complete the illusion? The accident happened in front of a, a huge crowd of spectators, and the area was immediately sealed off. Then everyone, police officers included, were banished to make way for the forensic investigation team. When else could the switch have occurred? It could only have been in the team's presence. It's essential that the court determines exactly what happened following the incident. 
The defense demands that Dr. Side be summoned to the witness stand at once to testify. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, I'm not pulling my cons out. <laughs> Guys are reporting a forming a chemical experiment. Little girl still eating the corn cob. Hey, you got nerve, lad. Standing up there, dragging the yard stain through the mud. I didn't mean to. I know the woman very well. There's no better dead room worker out there. How dare you call her a criminal? My learned friend's imagination appears to be wilder than the East End at night. <sighs> but the recklessness of your accusation aside, there's another grave problem with your argument. One which the prosecution demands you address at once. A grave problem? Oh my word. Who do you claim acted as the victim's doppelganger? What? Mm, certainly. The birdcage contained the body and the victim was exchanged for another. That cage must have also contained a body. And yet, no missing persons or accidental deaths of anyone even remotely resembling the victim have been reported. Which means there was no one, dead or alive, who could have fulfilled the role of a body double for Mr. Hasman. Ah, uh, that's true. If my argument is that there were two bird cages, then there must have been one person inside each. But I don't know if I've got an answer to this yet. Have I? What can I do to reveal how this body double stunt was achieved? Um, name someone, present evidence, nothing at the moment. Well, it's gotta be one of these two. <laughs> it's never just like nothing at the moment. If I say nothing, it'll probably be just just trying to give me a clue here. Um, I'm thinking it's probably gonna be evidence. Uh, hold on. Maybe the waxwork head. The the waxwork head. Maybe that's what I'm supposed to say. Like this is they used that body or something to uh, to fake it. Let me try that. Very well. The defense will address my learned friend's concerns by presenting evidence that reveals the true nature of Mr. Asma's body double. Good gracious, evidence. I do hope this isn't filibustering counsel. The core is expecting a name. If you think you have relevant evidence, present it now. The body double and the birdcage were hiding inside the balloon that was floating above the stage. Which means that any witnesses would only have seen them from 60 feet away. So who was it that appeared out of that explosion some 18 meters above the spectators? Aha. The body double inside the second birdcage was... Jesus! This? We know the victim, Mr. Aspen, was in the birdcage that was situated inside the kinesis machine on stage. And therefore, he couldn't have been inside the second birdcage. Instead, that contains something else. What's been described as a body double, which is what fell from the sky and crashed into the crystal tower. Yes, counsel. According to your somewhat elaborate version of events. And that body double inside the birdcage was, in fact... Sorry, Miss Naruhoto. You're ready for this. Just steal yourself and come out with it. Thank you, Miss Susto. I needed that. As I was saying, the body double inside the second bird birdcage was, as unbelievable as it may seem, that thing there. <laughs> I just sitting in a big bag over there. Is that what we do with all the evidence we bring in? <laughs> you just been sitting there that whole time. Yeah. Objection. Objection. The hell is that? <laughs> Where did that come from? Open your eyes and look into mine, my Nipponese friend. <laughs> yeah? Uh, ah! Now tell me. What are you playing at? Stand firm now, Ryunosuke. This is the time to show your Japanese spirit. As the core will observe, this is a waxwork model. Yeah! Oh no, I lost my powers. A model, in fact, of an infamous London murderer from 10 years ago. The Professor! Objection! Objection! I fucking know who it is! It killed my brother! You started by indicting the leader of the forensic investigation team as an accomplice in this crime. And now you've moved on to indicting Waxworks. Yes, that's about the size of it. But why? And why this Waxwork? It looks nothing like the victim. In fact, it could hardly resemble him less! What possible justification can you give? If you want to know why, ask Mr. Drebber. What? Just days before Professor Harebrain performed his public demonstration, Mr. Drebber abducted this model from Madame to Spells. Did you say uh, abducted? 
and two days after the incident at the Great Exhibition, he returned it to the museum. Then the timing. Is this true, Mr. Drebber? At first, I couldn't see why Mr. Drebber would have stolen the waxwork and then given it back again. But now, the reason's clear. He took it so that he could put it inside the second birdcage as a body double for Mr. Asmin. Objection! Objection! Ah. Are you hearing this, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Are you hearing the defense's astonishing proposal? That the witness fabricated this vast machine with the intention of deceiving such wretched, some wretched scientist. That he did so in collusion with the country's finest corridor on a public stage in front of a vast audience. And that, to the effect of the deception, he used a waxwork model that in no way resembles the victim. Are we really to believe this far-fetched tale? What do you decide? I don't know, I was just eating my corn cob. Ah, god dang it! Wait! Yes, if you put it like that, of course it sounds implausible! Uh, my lord, I need to speak of you, please. Go ahead, Mr. Foreman. Myself and my colleagues have reached an agreement. Very good, in that case. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your le leadings for the court to hear now. Guilty! 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 I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> we shall get we shall get through this, Mr. Naruto, as we always do. And uncover some new truths along the way, I'm quite sure. Yes, hopefully someone conveniently up there knows the insides and outs to all this shit. Yes, I agree. Gonna have to appeal to the jurors as usual and see if I can persuade them to change their minds. The defense will now embark on a summation examination. I don't even have to wait for you to say shit. I know you're gonna do it. Are you and your fellows ready to proceed, Mr. Foreman? We are, my lord. Very well. In that case, I ask you now to stay clearly for all present to hear. The grounds on which each of you has decided that the defendant is guilty of the crime of which he is charged. Okay, I can't wait to hear this horse shit. So the juror's contentions. I've known that woman for years. She'd never be an accomplice to anything. Okay, well that was at least a decent explanation. It's utter nonsense to think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Oh dear, this is most troubling. But surely the waxwork the man stole has nothing to do with the corner, is it? I have my own problems with members of the police. I do not trust them much. What? Uh, what? My own problems with members of the police? I do not trust them much? Okay, I was like, okay, everything makes no sense until we get to you. What are you fucking talking about? I've seen no rigorous proof of this waxwork was ever inside the birdcage. It's conjecture! A case of someone with rough, right, right evidence ain't not a proper job, easy. I won't have it. Okay, everybody was pretty good except the magician. I don't know what the fuck. What the fuck is the magician talking about? So what, unsurprisingly, it seems the introduction of this waxwork model to the proceedings has polarized opinion. Given that its face is obscured and its build is in no way resembles that of the victim. I can only applaud my learned friend's tem temerity at suggesting it as Mr. Asman's body double. So it's like... His head was removed, which means he could have been using the body, right? Oh, what if he used... Did he also steal the other uh, body, uh, the other waxwork figure that was there? His own? Was that gone as well? I think it was, right? Because we looked back there and, the, and both of those figures were gone, but we only ever talk about the professor. Could it be that he took the head of the other one and put it on the body of the... Well... Well, that seems ridiculous, because then what? No, that wouldn't make sense either, because they're frozen in those positions, right? Actually, now I think about it, he's all crouched over like that. Could they even really fit that shit in there? Actually, I don't have the other guy even in here. I have his camera, though, which just suggests that the camera was... That he, maybe he was there for it. But I was like, maybe he took the head off the other one and put it on there, but why would he do that? Why would he just use the one that is literally standing up straight, which I think would be better suited for putting being put into a cage than the guy who's crouched over like a fucking demon? Yes, the applause is deafening. And yes, I know it seems extraordinary, but that's the point. 
That's why I have a strong feeling. It's actually a greater clue than anyone yet realizes. What are you thinking, Mr. Naruhoto? I think I'm about to fuck some shit up. Can't explain why at the moment, but I feel as though there's a specific reason why it was used. Why it had to be this model. Really? A reason why nothing else would do, you mean? Yes, and I'm convinced. It's something far more significant than whether or not the model looked like the victim. Well, if that's the case, we must prevent prevent this trial from ending prematurely at all costs. Yes, agreed. I have to find a way out of this. Huh. Reason need to use that one? Uh I figured it would have been strapped in and shit, right? I don't know. Uh, damn, this 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 case really has me thrown for a loop. Like I'm trying to figure this shit out, but uh oh uh, wait. Maybe Oh oh no, I know why. He had to use it because it was going to fall and it was probably going I, well, it was gonna fall on his head, right? Or at least there was a chance of it falling on his head. Although I guess it would have been kind of hard to predict, honestly. I feel like it could have also landed on... He could have landed right side up and just hit his body. But it's a waxwork figure, right? So if it, he, if it had been a regular waxwork head, his head probably would have caved in and fucked up. So this one had a big metal thing over it. It made it so less likely to get damaged. There's actually nothing on here to... Yeah, there's no indication of damage. Yeah. I, I guess... If you're ready, Council, you may proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just press the first one that stood out to me, Mr. Magician Man. Because I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Okay, you guys are. Like, we start from the way right and then worked all the way to the left here. I have my own problems. I'm a member of the police. I don't trust them. Blah, 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 blah. Hold it. Hold it. What the hell are you talking about? What sort of problems? Let's just say we have a run into each other on numerous occasions while I've been performing on the street. Right, I see. Obviously, artists such as myself cannot appear on stage as we work in close proximity to our audiences. So we perform our great magic park, magic in parks, on street corners, and the like. The police use an excuse to make our lives difficult. Uh. Excuse me. Excuse me. I had a feeling that that might bring out something out of him. Do you have something to say in response to that, Mr. Ottermole? Who are you calling a mass murderer? Yeah, sorry, my mistake. I, I got confused because I heard you look like him. No, oh, anything like the man. You want to be locked up, sonny? I got a fucking gun. I'm going to shoot the shit out of you. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> no problem, Mr. Arhodo. I'm in the audience. I got to hear you. Perhaps we can move on. I was really wondering if you had something you wanted to add in response to what juror number three just said. Eh... Uh, Clearly you do. Back in my day, back in the good old days, you wasn't like this. What was it like, sir? We worked our fingers to the bone during the public's trust we did. But, Joe, we earned it. People respected us by then. Respected you? <laughs> no one would have called a coroner into question in them days. A uh, coroner's report was the hallmark of investigation done right. Especially when Dr. Courtney Stevens put her name to it. Yeah. Oh, she was the best of the best. In the apple of the foot. Hold on a minute. What are you talking about? Who's Courtney Stevens? Ah, uh, sorry. You got a bit carried away there. Stevens is Dr. Sai's maiden name. Oh, no, it's the other way around. The other way around. Okay. So not what I was thinking. I thought it was... Scythe was uh, her maiden name. And Stevens was her married name. Suggesting that the person died. So wid she went back to her maiden name as uh, as a widower, right? So she got married. Okay. Hmm. Her maiden name. So that was before she was married. Who's her husband? Of course, yes, it's me. It's sad now, isn't it? Stevens. I'm sure I've seen a name somewhere recently. Anyway, the point is, those were the great days of policing. Not like now. Sorry to interrupt, sir. But do you think you can change your statement to include that name? Uh, yes, I don't see why not. She was Courtney Stevens back when I knew her, of course. A legendary coroner even then. Um... Cause it actually go against anybody else's. 
Uh, I guess I'm just gonna press it. it. She was legendary, was she? What did you say? Ah! That woman, still the best corner in the land. Head of the forensic investigation team. Um, legendary was your description, sir, not mine. Rubbish, that word never passed my lips. I'd never describe anybody that way, ever. Not if they were still in the game. <laughs> Whatever, dude. I think the point you're trying to make is that Dr. Sides is an extremely talented coroner. Would that be fair? Hey, Wood. If it weren't for the fact that you're trying to drag a legendary woman's reputation through the mud. I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear the legendary. Um. Hmm. Okay, I don't know if I can really... So she's legendary, right? But let's go ahead and start pressing somebody else. So I, I think maybe you. Oh, dear, this is most troubling. I'm sure the wax work, mo uh, wax work the man's soul has nothing to do with the corner, is it? Hold it! Why would you, would you assume that? Well, quite simply because that unsettling swindler has no relation with the woman, does he? True. As it stands, we don't know any of, of any connection. Oh, gosh. But it would be delightfully romantic if they were somehow to have a mutual interest in the waxwork. Romantic? A woman of society as myself use everything in terms of relationships, you know. Well, you learn something new every day, even if you don't want to. One might wonder about a possible relationship between the defendant and this corner woman. Or perhaps between the defendant and the handsome prosecutor just there. Eh, uh, this woman. Maybe more astute than I've been giving her credit for. If that's the woman's stance, then perhaps demonstrating some connection between the waxwork and Dr. Scythe would be, en would be enough. Yes, I agree. And as soon as we have an, even a whiff of connection, she'll be the first to know. Yeah, n nothing yet. Okay, I've seen no rigorous proof this waxwork was ever inside the birdcage. It's just conjecture. Hold it! But you claim the whole instantaneous kinesis demonstration was a trick. That I did. There's more to one way to pull a rabbit out of a hat, isn't there? Sorry? I grant you, given that this cage appeared from missing an explosion, there'd have been no need to use a real person. But if a waxwork had been used, the culprit could at least have had the DC to make it look like the victim. I'm not sure exactly how much criminals are governed by decency. The point is, if you're going to make a claim about the waxwork being inside the birdcage, you need to give us some evidence. Without that, just not science. I suppose we should expect nothing less than a logical argument from a fellow of the Royal Society. But that perhaps means his mind could be changed if we manage to present suitable evidence. Evidence that the Professor Waxwork was inside the birdcage. Hmm. Can I produce that or not? Uh, the Professor Waxwork was inside the birdcage. Oh, wait, where was the piece of glass found? In the clothing of, yes, yes, right here. Yes, yes. Actually, I have something I'd like you to see, sir. No, oh, I must warn you that I firmly believe it's only wise for trust men in white coats. So given your jet black outfit, I don't mind admitting to a sense of trepidation here. So you don't trust anyone in black. Looking in the mirror must be very trying. I do have some evidence that proves the wax workers inside that birdcage, namely this big giant chunk of glass. What's that? A piece of glass? Oh, it's unusually thick, but glass. Yes, thick like you, sir. What's that? Nothing. It's a piece of broken glass that we found inside the jacket on the waxwork. As you say, it's not ordinary glass, though. It's very thick and clearly made for extra strength. Much like the special glass that was developed for the construction of the Crystal Tower. Of course, the... Holy smoke! Exactly. The centerpiece of the Great Exhibition where the very incident we're talking about took place. On the day in question, the birdcage fell from above and smashed through a window of that special glass. From whence this small piece of piece originated, is that it? Precisely. So, what do you say? Now that clear evidence to support this assertion has been placed before you. Well, as I said, I only trust men in white coats and blue. However, when the reasoning is sound, it's fair to say color shouldn't come into it. In light of what you've shown me here, yes, I feel obliged to take my position on the matter. In that case, ju juror number four, you will amend your statement now, please. Okay. The presence of that piece of glass leaves me in a little doubt that the wax, in little doubt that the wax was indeed inside that birdcage. Okay. Okay. Still doesn't really tie into anything what like he's saying. Uh, so I guess we're we'll going to press this guy. It's utter nonsense to think these two would ever be conniving with one another. 
but we're only just starting to understand this case. Oh, he's currently reading the paper that I have in my inventory. What are you reading there, sir? The man behind those murders on Solar Pond Street was caught in two days flat. That's real policing for you. That's really not relevant to this case, is it? You're wrong there. Because it was Dr. Scythe in charge of examining the bodies. It took evidence arising from her work that led to the arrest of the scoundrel responsible. Oh. That's right. Oh, that woman is led to the forefront of this country's fight against crime. The idea that she's somehow involved in this murky business is a load of old tosh. I thought it was up to me to press the jurors, not the other way around. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Well, we only have one person we haven't pressed. I guess we'll press you, little girl. Uh, accusing someone with right evidence. He's not a proper job, is he? I won't have it. The hell are you talking about, you little weirdo? Whose sassy child is this? Gotta ask, why have you brought that corn to court with you? Go to court! He's been growing back in... He's been growing back on the farm. Picked him over me on the way into town. He's a proper nibbler, he is. <laughs> corn old cop? What? But how does the car keep coming back after you fit? Look. Whoa! Do you have, like, a bunch under there? Yes, the nibbling seems to be taking quite a while. Maybe it could wait until after the trial? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Getting cuddles at times like these. Whatever I serve, I serve a victim to decide, the cuddle always points me in the right direction, see? Y you're talking about your comic corn? <laughs> nibble, 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 guilty bubble. Nibble, not guilty out. Nibble, nibble, guilty bubble. Nibble, not guilty out. Nibble, nibble, get you, Bobble. Nibble, not get you out. Nibble, nibble, get you, Gobble. Gibble, gobble, gibble, gobble. Starting to sound like gibberish now. Perhaps it's akin to fortune telling with flower petals, like people do back home. So Professor Hairbrain's phase to be side by a cob of corn. Great. Could you not at least wait until we've had more time to find the truth before deciding on the defendant's guilt? Uh, I don't know about that. My tummy's awfully full already. I... Amazing. Ah ha ha. My easing. Ah, uh, high five, brain. Ah, uh, I hate myself. Ah, uh, okay. Wait, so do I have what I need at this point? Oh, I think, yeah, his and the other guy. Without proper evidence. Now I have evidence. Objection. Yeah, there we go. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious. Two statements you refer, counsel. You could put down your co corn for a moment, juror number five. Oh, you mean me? Nobody else has corn up there, you little weirdo. Point out that's wrong to make an accusation without evidence. But the accusation that the waxwork model was inside the second birdcage on the day in question is not without supporting evidence. As the defense demonstrates to the juror sitting beside you. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it is right. Would it be fair to say you didn't follow the argument? So much for that Colonel's cop, to be honest. He's the only one who talks to me. Ah, these kids, I swear to God. Of course you don't. I could interject here. Please do, sir. Now, the assertion of yours about the waxwork has been backed up by some solid evidence. It wouldn't be wrong of me as a man of science not to pursue the matter further. I like, why did you wait till I spit you two against each other? Not when I actually presented the thing. Shut up! Okay, well, that's one part of this. What about you, little girl? Oh, well, big two then. Sorry? It's this pretty gentleman that he says, says he's right, but he must be. See? I, um. I want the German to go against Colonel Cobb, anyone who's stuffing between the ears. Yes, Colonel Cobb, our Lord and Savior. Okay, slightly better. I like how the judge looks pissed off over there. I'm stuck in pissed off face. Success, if you can call it that. Okay. Of course, you got some evidence. That's whole the uh, whole other cob of corn in it. Lovely job. Okay, well, we've got that. So, now what? So, maybe tying it. Of course, he's back then. I knew or left your corner even then. This was trouble. I'm sure the max work the man stole has nothing to do with the corner. Objection. Okay, that works, and I don't quite understand why, to be perfectly frank. These two statements clearly contradict each other. Good oh, gracious. Two statements you refer, counsel. So, juror number two. Oh, gosh, me. What, what can I do for you? 
I presume that you heard that what juror number six said in his statement. It's brought to light that the main name of the coroner, Dr. Scythe, which in turn has revealed a connection to that wasn't apparent before. Well, naturally, as a woman of society, I find such connections and relationships irresistible. But, oh golly, I'm afraid I failed to see what you mean. Dr. Scythe's maiden name is Stevens. And through that name, the coroner is very definitely linked to the waxwork of the killer. The defense has evidence to prove it. My goodness, evidence you say? How utterly, utterly enthralling. Counsel, the court cannot overlook this last remark. Very much hope there is substance to your claim. Of course, my lord. I would ask the court to look at this. The evidence that clearly links Dr. Scythe to the mass murder knows the, the professor. So it's the autopsy report. Hold on a second. So I'm popping back. So I'm like, I'm, what I'm confused about is possible relationship between the defendant and this corner woman. Perhaps the defendant and the handsome prosecutor just there. Between the waxwork and Dr. Scythe. Okay. I think I was I was reading this as the Dr. Scythe and um, Enoch Drebber. And not... Yeah, fuck me, dude. I don't know. I'm just having a hard time following some of this shit. <laughs> Ugh, that arm is fucking slow today. I don't know. Uh, okay. All right. I get it. So, yeah. The, she says waxwork and it has nothing to do with the, the coroner. But then she in her statement, she was like, oh, what I have to do? Maybe it has to do with uh, the defendant or I guess the prosecutor. But I should have just... It, this is what matters. So, yes. It's the it's the waxwork that is the the connection. And, and I know what it is. The autopsy Objection. report. But, I don't know. Her statement just confused me. It made me think I was looking for something different. But, all right. Take that. I have here a certain autopsy report from 10 years ago. A 10-year-old autopsy report? What relevance does that have? Is, of course, from the autopsy of the person portrayed in the waxwork. The killer known as the Professor. Professors, but the man was a capital offender, so... He's fucking dead. That's right. This is the certification of death that was drawn up after the convict's execution. The identity of the killer was never made public, so the report gives few details. But what's important is the name of the coroner who wrote it. Courtney Stevens. Oh my, Courtney Stevens. Yeah, strike her light. It appears the professor's autopsy was conducted by Dr. Scythe 10 years ago. And a few days ago, Mr. Trevor very deliberately stole the waxwork of the professor from Madden to Spells. A waxwork that doesn't, in fact, resemble the victim, Mr. Asman, at all. And do you suppose there's some unsavory relationship between those events? Absolutely. I'm sure of it. There's no doubt in my mind that the professor case is at the heart of a link that we have yet to uncover. Between Dr. Courtney Scythe and Mr. Enoch Trevor. Hidden links, mysterious connections, sick relationships. This is all most extraordinary. But still, surely, we're surely obliged now to explore this further. Whack. All right, you old crusty fart. You better change yours, too. Right, right. Yeah, we can't let this trial come to an end now. Now, while there's still this cloud of suspicion taking over the yard's best corner. Ah, it was the night, it's the mighty, but we're still gonna up old just in the end. There we go. Yeah. All right. Good. Take that, yeah, big giant scale. Thank you, counsel. That will do. As a result of the summation examination, the jury's overall leading has changed. Two jurors now call guilty against four who called not guilty. Accordingly, the court has failed to reach a consensus at this time. And the trial must continue. Wait, he did it? Oh, well done, Mr. Narahodo. Another wonderful victory. Heck yeah. Go me. In your face, Seeks. In your face. Shut up. Hmm. A waxwork of the despicable bit professor uses a body double for the victim in this quite extraordinary case. I must say, it's extremely hard to believe the assertion could possibly be true. However, it would appear that it does at least warrant further investigation. It's the waxwork of the professor that links Mr. Drebber and Dr. Scythe. And I'm convinced that there's a special significance to that link. I don't know what you're hoping to prove, lad. I really don't. Me neither, dude. The truth, sir, by using evidence and testimony. <laughs> the court is to delve deeper into the alleged involvement of the waxwork in this case. Then the prosecution calls for the owner of the model to be summoned as a witness. The owner? Ah. I'm to spells. 
Madam to spells. I really thought that Lord Fenstix would object to this whole line of inquiry. Very well, I concur. Make an arrangement for Madam to spell to appear as a witness with immediate effect. Listen carefully, my learned friend. Oh, yes? You should know that you're on the brink of opening Pandora's box. <laughs> oh, okay. The court and I will adjourn for 45 minutes. During that time, the prosecution will summon the new witness and prepare her for taking the stand. Madam to spells, yes. What about the coroner? I shall see to it at once, my lord. We need to talk to the coroner, too. Okay, good. I was actually hoping that would be uh, the, the end of that one. Because I'm like, we'll be going for a while. I hope this is the, the end. It's, not helped by the fact that I was really confused in a lot of this <laughs> this fucking one. Had quite a few boo-boos there. It's like, oh my god. Ugh. Some of it was... Uh, I don't know. I think a lot of it was me, though, to be perfectly frank. I could, I could absolutely see someone just being like, oh yeah, I totally get it. I totally get what's going on. I'm just... Just a fucking dumb dumb. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm just off my game today. So the cage fell. We have any questions too. I feel like the one question I'm not seeing them bring up is like, what happened to the other cage, right? If there were two cages, where did the other one go? Um, and I feel like that should also be an argument that, well, it's not here because it was hidden by the coroner. But maybe I'll get brought up later. But then again, I guess that's the point, right? That this is all hearsay. If even if she did do it, there still was not really any evidence aside from what I pointed out. Like, oh, well, it didn't. If it would land it upside down, then why is there damage on the bottom? Like, it's it's there, but it's not maybe not enough to make him go, oh, yeah, there definitely was two cages. I think it's the point, right? We're, just, we're building our way up to it. This is a crazy fucking case, dude. This is crazy. I don't know, dude. It's So it's going to be something where I think it's the professor never was actually executed. And I'm going to bet it's probably her husband. Then my question is, like, is this guy, like, going to be, like, related to Odie Asman in some way? But then what would what would that accomplish, though? We've already got the waxwork figure that was acting as the body for the Odie Asman guy, right? So it's not like there was literally two people in there. We're already arguing, no, it was the waxwork figure and Odie Asman. So... What does that matter, right? What is the professor even potentially still being alive? What does that matter to this case? I don't I fucking know, dude. I don't know. <laughs> ah! It's getting crazy though. Um, it's really good. Like I am I, I like that this case has me so utterly flabbergasted and baffled. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm seeming like a, a just complete and utter dumbass to you guys. I don't know. It's, it is like I do feel like some of this was not as complicated as I was making it to be, but it's I don't know. It's like, it's one of those things where sometimes you just like, you do sometimes get like tunnel vision where you think you really see the answer and you focus so hard on that you don't see anything else around it, right? Um, and that, that definitely felt like what I was doing this episode, which I just, oh, uh, fuck me. Which I've definitely done plenty of times before, I guess. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe and already become Biggie Penguin aboard this cell P. Where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And hopefully you guys liked uh, what I went with the Drebber voice here, at least a bit better. I thought I thought maybe like making the, the orange parts, the like that goes full robot, but everything else is more maybe slightly. It sounds like a guy, but if not slightly stilted, at least that was what my thought process was. But anyway, as always, speaking of penguins, till next time, guys, stay classy.